So in this film, we're going to be looking at the Remove Tool in Photoshop, uh, released, I think, around about March, was it, of 2023? I can't remember now. We've covered it in Photoshop School, but I just thought we'd kind of go over it again, looking at one image and its workflow to create. So uh, before we start, first thing as normal, Control-J to duplicate the uh, layer. You'll also see now that we've got the contextual bar taskbar uh, is now in uh, the up-to-date version of Photoshop. Some of you might have first come aware of this in the likes of the beta uh, released a few weeks ago uh, in May of uh, 23, um, but now this contextual bar is basically here to stay and we'll be using it more and more. The uh, remove tool um, is situated on the toolbar um, where you would find the usual spot helium brush and so on with it. And as you can see here, um, I've got it selected already. <clears throat> Couple little things to begin with. Um, if we look at the top of the actual toolbar options here, we've got one which is remove after each stroke. I'll demonstrate that now. That basically means every time I let go of the pen tablet or in my case a mouse, it basically removes it and replaces it with a high resolution finish, as high resolution as it can, unlike generative fill in beta, where it's obviously still in low resolution. Um, or if I untick it, basically um, it won't kind of do the replacement uh, or the remove elements until I basically press that tick box, but I'll demonstrate both for you. So um, first, first of all, let's kind of just swipe through this um, bridle over on the right hand side. And that is now going to quickly remove it as quick as that for us. So I'm not doing anything special. If we look in here, it's a pretty good fix. There is some kind of element of the board that needs to be fixed still, because obviously it's just guessed what is around, but it is a high resolution kind of finish. Let's make the brush smaller, just using the left bracket. And we just wipe from the good part of the board mixed to the, uh, bad part or the replacement. And as you can see already, it's actually put the board kind of back in. There's a little bit of a fake kind of uh, board being put there as well. So we we'll kind of lose that. And as far as there's a repeating pattern going down on here of some of the boards. So we'll just kind of quickly flick over that and let it do its job. Then um, <clears throat> before we get to the big elements, you know, we can see there's the mum just inside the stable, keeping control of the pony. Um, and I found the best results are when you work on little areas at a time instead of the whole area at once, as it were, um, and just let it go from there. Because I touched the white bar, um, that basically has included that as well. So if we just shrink the brush down even more, we just work on the top part of mum first, it should ignore the white then, there we go, but it hasn't ignored mum fully. So we need to make that brush a little bit bigger for mum to kind of get its sample area around. There we go. And then we can start to work down the actual hand, uh, including then you can see there's kind of a repeating pattern of the fingers going down there. We need to include that within the shot. Swiping up then to kind of uh, remove the rest of it. And then let's go in and remove the basket. So as far as uh, kind of advanced Photoshop users are concerned, you know, I'm sure you're gonna go, oh, you know what, but why don't I just use the clone stamp tool or whatever it is? I agree with you. Um, however, you're gonna have to work really, really hard to just even do the simplest of things what I've just been doing there. And better to actually kind of go over the section two or three times and it will actually regenerate it or kind of look at what it can clone and actually get that quality with. Um, as I mentioned, I've found that if you uh, have a bigger brush and include the bigger areas as well, it will basically sample all the way around. However, you do need to then go in and uh, shrink the brush down again and just actually start to re-put in the parts that it's lost. We're working on a full resolution file as well, uh, which means that it's gonna take a little bit slow. Unlike generative, uh, generative fill, this is actually done on um, your machine instead of on the cloud. 
So at least it's uh, faster than the generative element. And, and you know, I, I need to actually bring an edge to this board here. Remember, it's faked it. It doesn't know what it is. So in this case, I would pick up the likes of the clone stamp tool, get a small brush, uh, click into the area here, and then with a new layer in place, I'll just go in and start to add in an edge. And I'm just going to flatten that down with these two then. So uh, just control click these, control E. And now what I'm going to go back to is the remove tool again. And in this case, I'm going to use that texture to add more texture across. Um, so now you can see why I copied that a little bit to begin with. Right, so um, we're going pretty well. There's that other option, as I said, instead of just actually doing it with one stroke, I can actually say, well, um, wait till I finished all the selections of the kind of the, I'm almost quick masking if you think about it. And if I was to go through all the areas, what it's now doing, instead of every time I release the mouse, it kind of goes to fix stuff. It's saying, well, I'll not fix stuff until you say. So I can go across here as well. And then all I've got to do is click the tick and that will now say Photoshop, please remove all those, a those areas. And you can see it's done a pretty amazing job of it all. So I find though by un uh, unchecking this box, it's a little bit slower for me. Um, we'll all work on our own way anyway. So um, if I just click on that one first, now it's back into the normal. So every time I uh, paste across it, now it's going to work. So if I want to kind of remove freehand some of the, area, of the areas, we pretty much can actually work at our own pace and things really. But you can see what we've done here um, in a very short period of time we really have done a great job on removing all of those elements. And that is the power of that remove tool. Uh, I'm sure many of you are going to use it to um, get rid of much simpler items. Um, but again, I thought it'd be good to actually concentrate on this with all the fuss going on around with gen generative fill and knowing that it's still at low resolution unless you're creating a 1024 box um, for the selection. Um, you, you really are going to end up with a lot more low res than higher res, as it were. And of course, what I'm doing here to some extent is I'm still controlling um, where it's sampling from.